How's it guys and welcome to the first show of Cooking with Mr. Appazat. Today we joined by a very famous person, Brett Michelin, the owner of the Mozambique Group and the guy who's invented all the recipes that you enjoy at every Mozambique restaurant across the country. So welcome to the show, Brett. Hi Imran, good to see you. I'm great. Like what are we cooking today? So what we're going to be doing today is a new recipe that I've been working on. So it's a mixture of chimichurri with a bit of coconut, with a bit of peri-peri. Right. And we're going to do a, a pan-fried de-shelled prawn and we're going to serve it with a brunoise style Persian salad. Okay, so the name that you mentioned initially, what was that? Uh, chimichurri. What is that, chimichurri? So chimichurri is basically a mixture of, of herbs. You can use flat leaf, parsley, coriander. Right. Um, I've, I've, this is actually not chimichurri per se. This is perichurri. Okay. So a lot of chili. A Mozambique spin on it. A Mozambique spin on it. Um, ginger, garlic. We're going to add, very important, cheap vinegar, good olive oil. That's the secret. So guys, that's interesting. Cheap vinegar, good olive oil. I'm, yep. I'm keen to taste this. And then I'm going to add in our peri nut sauce, which is a sauce that I developed during lockdown last year. It's right. a coconut based peri peri. We're going to mix it all together. This, this recipe was actually made by accident, the whole recipe. We were camping out in Cozy Bay. Right. And I didn't want to carry both sauces, so I mixed them together. Right. And I put it on the table before we left for breakfast. And when I looked, the 750 ml bottle was gone. Everyone was like, you've got to do the sauce more often. Well, so every great invention happened by mistake, from yep. what I heard. Right, let's go. All right, Brett, so you're going to coach me. What's step one? So our first step is to make the piri churi. Okay? Right, so go. we're going to have, we're going to chop up some coriander, chop up a bit of green chili, right. ginger, garlic. We're going to add some salt and pepper, okay. vinegar, cheap vinegar, remember? 100%. And good olive oil. Right, cool. Right, let's go. All right, so you're going to work the pestle and mortar. Once, you got all, once I've chopped up everything, okay. we're gonna, you're going to just work the pestle and mortar while I'm cooking. You're just going to carry on slowly grinding away at it. Right, guys. You guys are privileged to have Brett share his secret recipe with us. So, guys, take notes. Anyway, it's recorded. So, you guys are going to be able to follow this recipe to the T. Right, so we're chopping up the chilies. Yeah. All Obviously, right. add as many chilies as you want. Right. Um, this is, it doesn't really have to sort of be uniform. You can see I'm just chopping away here. It's just to help the process of grinding these chilies up. So should I wait for everything to get in before I start grinding? Go for it. Just go for it. Go right. for it. So we're going to go for it. This is Durban chilies, guys. Locally produced. Nothing from Mexico. <laughs> What's next then? Then we're going to just add some chopped garlic. Same, same procedure. All right. Just chopped up. The only one that I'm going to chop finely is the ginger, which right. is going to go next. You'll see here, I've already cut them to sort of that thickness. Right. And now I'm going to really cut them to small little squares. Okay, cool. Okay, so um, that cut is called a brunoise cut. All right, got it. Okay. Guys, the aroma is phenomenal from here. The chili, uh, the ginger, and I'm sure the garlic is coming across here. So I can only imagine how great the sauce is going to be. So do we need this into a paste? Yeah. So you just carry on there. Okay. Once I've got the ginger there, right. um, we discussed the secret before the show. You know the secret, but I'm, we're going to let everyone else know about the secret of, the, of, of how to help this along. Thank carry you on. for sharing the secret with us. You should, it should be ready where, by the time, it should be ready when you get a tennis elbow. <laughs> uh, okay, right. so the ginger is chopped finely there. That's going in. Okay. All right. Now, so now we're going we to we putting that. We're uh, going to put the coriander in. But right. what I want to do first now yeah. um, is add the salt. Right. Um, I'm adding in the salt, and this is the, the the trick to it. The salt will help with the actual um, grinding of the spices. And so, stuff. What, so why are we adding rough salt in here? Because of that. So it, it almost it turns it into a mill. So it's really okay, going to cool. grind that spice up. You don't want to put this, um, um, the, sorry, the, the herbs and stuff into a blender. Right. It doesn't come out the same. Okay. So it, it, it'll mess the well, sauce Well, I won't up. lie. That's the trick I've been using at home is putting it into a blender. So it's not the same. No. No. Okay. Cool. So guys, that's another trick that we're that's missing cool. out. Is that if you want to take shortcuts and you want to put it into a blender, you're missing out on that fine taste that we're going to get from actually using your hands and grinding it down. So also, um, the, one, the one thing here as well, if you do put too much salt in, 
Yeah. We are going to adjust that salt content with the vinegar. Right. And the. And the so we can oil. never have a case where it's too much of salt. No. We could always help. We can always work it out. Perfect. You can add also more coriander. This is your base. Now. So right. This is your. Your, 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 your total base now. Right. Um, the, the pepper is not necessary. Okay. Um, but we're going to add a little bit of pepper. And actually, I'm going to use this one here because it's right. a nice big grinder. This one can go in as a grind. Lovely. Right, guys. So this is looking really, really good. It's easy. It's not difficult. And I promise you, it smells phenomenal. Okay. Next, you're going to chop gonna up carry on there. I'm, I'm going to chop. I'm going to chop the coriander, and I'm going to chop it also quite finely. I'm making sure that I'm not missing any steps because some chefs they've got a secret touch that they add in and they don't disclose it to us. <laughs> no, no. So I'm making sure that everything is on board here. We don't miss out any steps. So the only the only thing you don't want going in here when you're making your coriander is like a long stalk. Okay. So cool. I'm just trying to make so you sure. you remove the stalks. No, the stalks are in there. I'm just but making sure that they okay, cool. they finally chop. Guys, when a when a chef like Brett Mitchell is cooking, ask all the questions you want to ask, so we don't miss out any steps. All right, we're ready with that. Okay. Let's go. That can Done. Burn. So coriander, also known as danya, for those in the towel. So we're really going to give that a, a good, a good um, sort of uh, grinding. So right. just carry on grinding it away good? at it. It's looking good. It's smelling good. Okay, perfect. So um, if you find now that you need a bit of liquid, right? We're gonna we add in the olive oil first, not good the Good quality vinegar. olive oil. Yeah. Okay, good. So I'm just going to put some of that in. That'll help with the grinding process. All right. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Done. Right. That's much easier. Okay, what's the next step? So, carry on. That's going to take a bit of time. Okay. While we're doing this, this should take about five minutes. We're going right. to grind, grind, grind away. Right. I'm going to fry up the prawns. Okay. Now, the prawns here are, is very, very simple. All I'm going to do is add salt and pepper and some olive oil to the pan. We're going to fry the prawns up. Okay. Um, I've de-shelled these prawns. A very, a very important lesson is try stay away from the prawn meat you buy that's peeled and steamed already. Okay. It's not the best quality. So you try to find a headless prawn that's got its shell on that's, that's frozen raw. With the vein on. With the vein on and the whole lot. All ones with head and actually de-shell them yourself. Okay. You'll have a far better product. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So I'm going to start off the... Okay. And in terms of the size of the prawn, does it make a difference in what we use? Um, not really. Like what size is that? that, that that's a 40-50. So it's, it's basically... the. The old Mozambican double S or the right. new style S prawn. That the well, it depends on your Prince preference. Prawn, it depends on your it. preference on yeah. what you want to use. Yeah, I prefer these prawns. I just find that they, they this, this prawn that we're using here is actually, actually an Ecuadorian prawn. Right. For me, personally, I think they're the best prawns on the market. I've heard that. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to just add some olive oil. Okay. Just a touch. You don't need too much. I'm going to let that cook up a bit. So this goes on, I think I've got another three minutes here. Perfect, that's looking good. Where else? All right. Some vinegar. Cheap vinegar. Don't yep. forget to mention that one. For whatever reason, Brett says it makes a difference. Cheap it's vinegar. Quite a, it's quite a funny thing. I, I was taught this by an old Portuguese lady years ago. Because I used to add like cider vinegars and red wine vinegars yeah. and white wine. And said, no, no, you must use the cheap vinegar. And it truly does work. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, I think it's just the, more of the acidity and so on. It just, it does work. And, and always spirit. So it's, it's, and I mean, at the end of the day, it's your choice. You know, yeah. I, I, I prefer this and you'll, you'll taste that sauce now. I just want to give it a taste, see if we've got enough salt. Good. It's good. Good. So we've got the olive oil going nicely. And we're not going to overcook these prawns. Okay, so I'm going to come over and watch yeah, what you're doing. Yeah, you can stop there now. That's cool, yeah. Imran. So you can right. give this a mix while I grab some salt and pepper. Okay. So how long do we actually do this for? Um, you'll see the prawns curl up. So those... You just, the... you just toss it around. Eh? Hey? Just toss it around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just toss them around. Heat level, we seem to be on high. Yeah. So that's it. All right, cool. Seems easy enough. Gonna add a bit of salt. Okay. So these prawns, nothing has been done in terms of marination? No. Zero. So you put it's a bit necessary. of salt. Alright, 
get the flavors of the actual prawn coming out. Yeah. Okay. And a touch of pepper, not too much pepper. So you'll All see right, guys. So this, this feels easy enough. Trusting the prawns around. We've grinded the spices out there. Doesn't seem difficult. What's what's after this? Once we once we once we got those prawns out, we're going to take them off the heat. Yeah. We are going to take our peri nut sauce, which is this the the, the coconut peri peri sauce uh, that I've made. Is this from Mozambique? This is from Mozambique. Can we purchase that? You can purchase it. Okay. Okay, but um, it, it's it's a pretty simple recipe. Right. So it's a it's a mixture of our normal peri peri. Well, it's easier to purchase it from you guys. Yeah, yeah, anyway. but it's easy. It's easy enough to do. It's just a, a mixture of peri peri, coconut milk. I won't lie. And some salt. We, we need we need shortcuts in our kitchen, so we can purchase it from you. That's fine. It's called a peri nut sauce. Am I right? Yeah. Right. Perfect. So, so we've got that also now. taking just remember something with Mozambique. Yeah. Is there's there's no preservatives in our in our food. Okay. So this sauce will come to you frozen. Right. Because it doesn't have the acidity, like of our normal sauce, that doesn't need refrigeration. Yes. Um, to keep it... Uh, so once it comes it. to us frozen, do we need to use it in a certain time? Keep no. it in your fridge. But once fine. we take it out, you need to use it yeah. immediately. Yeah. Oh, you Perfect. can give it a couple of days. Are there any so other sauces that you guys sell off besides yeah. that? Yeah, we, got, we, we do our lemon butter, our peri peri. We do our chinchado sauce. Um, Basically everything got at the restaurant. Yeah, everything. You can cook Mozambique at home. Well, I've actually done that. I've cooked Mozambique at home. When we had level five lockdown, I remember you guys did that uh, yeah. box of yeah, chicks. Yeah. And I told my wife, I'm going to order a box of chicks. And he was like, wow, a box of chicks. Are you crazy? I said, no, a box of chicks from Mozambique, <laughs> not the other chicks. <laughs> but so it was cool. With this sauce here, um, I've had this sauce, like once I've made it up, I can leave it in my fridge for five days, a week, whatever. I've Is never it? had it go off. Okay. So These prawns look good, Brett. Cool. Uh, Bring them over. And all we're going to do now is just add the sauce in. Okay, so you've thrown that peri nut in Inside, while I was yeah. grinding. Yes, yeah. Done. But so just I've, got a little bit of, I've got a little bit of... Stir it up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Stir it up. All right. And that's the sauce that's ready to go. So... Done. Done. Wow. Done. So, so if it's not hot enough, I've brought some teaspoons for you to taste. If it's not okay. hot enough, we'll warm it up a bit more. But into a bowl, and we're so, going to serve it. So, guys, I wish you could smell this. I'm going to let you serve it. Cool. So guys, the, the, the aroma from this is absolutely phenomenal. And everyone in the studio right here, right now, they're, they're salivating because this is phenomenal. And it's so, so easy. We've just seen how easy it is. You can impress anyone at all. Impress yourself, impress guests, impress your family. Wow. Hey man, I want to, I want to taste the sauce here right. before, before, um, before we actually cook it. So this, this, I mean, this can go into fried eggs in the morning or whatever. Wow. Got a kick. Got a kick. But it's good. Yeah, eh? a kick, but it's nice. I promise you, this is this is insanely good. And it's so simple. So Brett, so simple. I really appreciate you teaching us Thank you. the secret recipe of yours. It's no more secret, guys. We now know it. But you can never, never, never replicate Mozambique. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, so Brett, we've done with this dish. I still can't get the name, it's a tongue twister. Okay. So tell me again. The peri churi. Right. So we're going to pair this with a salad. Yeah. Right, let's roll. Let's go for it. All right, cool. So we're going to, we, I, I call it um, uh, the, a Persian salad. I don't, I don't even know what it's called. It's just something okay. that we, I mean, it's not new to anyone. It's, it's a, a simple recipe. So you're going to chop some of this up. Right. We're going to, I'll just give you an idea of, on all the veg that we're going to do. We are going to basically, I'm just going to take one piece so you can see here. So. Quite thin. We're gonna just chop it into tiny pieces. Tiny pieces. Now guys, the reason why I'm not getting involved when you've got a master chef like Brett Michelin involved in the kitchen, you take a step back and you just learn, watch and learn from the master. So I've just got a. I'm, what I'm gonna be doing here? Just a bit of cucumber in here. For now, this Perfect. this. Um, this, uh, I'm just going to move this dish over. Oh, oh sorry. So they can yeah. see that. So, so you're cutting it into, into thin slices yes. and then across. Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. Okay. So guys, what it's going to look like is this, is these small cubes. That's exactly what it needs to end up like. But this is how you do it. So that cut is called a brunoise cut. Okay, there we the go. The French term for, for, the, for the cut. Can we not give it a South African spit? Uh, little cubes. <laughs> there we go, guys. Little cubes. Simple terms. Is good for us. All right, okay. let's go. So this salad is basically got a cucumber, tomato. You're almost making a sandals. Right. Uh, some onion, and then we're going to add in. Uh, say, now you now you're speaking to me when you say sambles Now understand what you're saying. <laughs> Red had to get fancy and use the French term. You should have just said sambles. <laughs> right. Let's go. Cool. 
Now this is something I can't do as well, and only chefs can do where they chop it up like that. Have your fingers ever got nicks? Yes. 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 Yeah, okay, yeah. So you guys just look good so, now at the finished product. Yeah. So this knife here, a couple yeah. of Christmases ago, I got that. So yeah, I was, I just cut some roast stuff, right? Uh, and I went to the uh, to the dishwasher to put it in the dish or into the into the basin, and it slipped and I caught it. And, and I ended up in, in... But I'm sure <laughs> when you were learning how to cook, I mean, there must have been a lot of nicks. Oh, loads. Eh? Loads. And a, and a, a blunt knife will cut you uh, more than a, than a sharp So the knife. finished product, and when you watch chefs do that chopping, where they're nailing it as fast as they ca can, guys, that's the end product. But they have hurt themselves, so don't try it at home. Yeah, so what I'm going right. to do here is I'm going to try to flatten this as much as I can. You see how I've taken this Does it little. make a difference what color pepper we use? Um, I like to use yellow in this salad because it's okay. nice and sweet. Right. Um, uh, or you can use red, but you've really got a tomato in there, so it's just more for color, you know. Okay. Are peppers more for color or do different peppers? Oh, no, there's definitely a taste thing. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, fine. So, so in this recipe, we're using yellow. Guys, follow the recipe. Let's use yellow. And again, we're doing the... What cut was it? The South this is uh, the this, this, what was it? Small pieces. What? Small small pieces. Small yeah. cut. Sample cut. Let's use it as that. Yeah, the sample cut. That's the a sample good cut. Yeah, Let's yeah, call yeah. it the sample cut. Yeah. There we go. Right. Next is uh, red, onion. red onion. Same. Don't want to put too much red onion in. And again, I'll ask the question: Why red onion? Why Just not the white? Color again. Okay. okay. And also, it's, it's definitely got a, a different flavor. Well, I've started using red onion more. Yeah, um, and I've just automatically turned it up with everything so, using red onion. So I like it when I make like um, uh, like onions for burgers and stuff like, like yeah. nice uh, glazed onions, you know, with the sugar and so on. Like it, it caramelizes nicely. Right. It gets a really good because um, there is quite a bit of sugar in these in these red onions. So okay. And so well, I did find the taste was different using Yeah, those. definitely, definitely. Right, cool. So how much of the onion did we use? Just, just a just, tiny just a bit. I mean, you, you're basically looking at what? About a tablespoon of onion. Right, We're it. doing a portion here, right? Right. So basically, guys, we are creating a sample yeah. in essence. Yeah. Tomato. Yeah. Right. Uh, tomato, tomato, guys, in case anyone catches up on that one. Right. So now, normally, now normally I would cut the tomato differently. I would core it open and I'd start to, right. because I want that look of the sambal. Right. I'm just I've, same way. I've just done it so it's nice and square. Right. You make using that knife very easy, eh? That's a, it helps when you got a nice knife. Right? <laughs> these are actually handmade knives and from Belito. Okay, cool. Yeah. Wh who's made these knives? A guy called David Hula. Okay. Um, and this is one of his first knives. Right. So it's, they have got a lot better as, right. as, as they've gone along. Right, um, cool. Yeah, so he's, he's, he's got some really incredible right, knives. So guys, David Hula has made this knife, in case anyone knows Yeah, so I mean, the one thing as well, I've asked him to redo this now into um, take off the wood and go with a, a giraffe bone. Okay. So all the knives are going to go for facelift soon. I'm going to add a bit more tomato in there. There's not enough there. Okay, cool. So same thing. I'm just going to slice it out like that. Right. Because I'm getting close to the core, I've turned it around. So guys, if you guys want to see what it looks like, that's exactly what it looks like. Literally, samples. That's a simple top. Okay, so Imran, while we're waiting there, can you salt it for me? All right, fine. Going with that. Salt and pepper, eh? Yep. Okay, so somebody's put on oh, the Oh, yep, here we go. So use this one, sorry. <laughs> That was a trap. That got me just now as well. <laughs> right, so we're going to give this a bit of a mix. Yeah. We're going to put a bit of salt, a bit of pepper, a little bit more tomato. Looks very, very great. Uh, Good enough in there for a yep, salad. Yeah, perfect. Okay, I'm going to add there a little bit. There we go, guys. That's I'm exactly going to add a little bit of, 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 of coriander. coriander. So on this one, I'm not going to chop this coriander too fine. Okay. I want to have it a bit chunky. You want a so, bit of stem in it? Yeah. There. Okay, cool. And we're going to mix that in there. All right, good. Now for the vinaigrette. I'm gonna what is that now? Add some orange juice. Okay. Some fresh, freshly squeezed orange. So we're going to use one orange or half? Um, we'll see how much we get out here. And okay, then we'll, cool. we'll go from there. But probably, probably one. Let's see uh, how much we've got there. No, half's fine. I think half will be good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Chuck that in. Perfect. Cool. Okay. Some olive oil. The good olive oil, guys. 
Okay, are we putting any vinegar? No. Some vinegar. Are we? Yep. Okay. I'll put a touch of that. So you're getting that sweet, sour, All right. different textured sort of vibe in that salad. It smells really great. I mean, with the orange, it gives it a different aroma. Mm. Completely. You, everyone should be using oranges every day in their salads. I promise you now. Serious. Well, yeah. I've never, ever heard anyone using orange in a salad. Mm. This is That's the difference. Okay, so we're going to taste this up. Wow. Delicious, eh? Orange makes a big difference. Big difference, eh? Big difference. Okay, so, cool. what's next? Now we plate them. Done. Guys, Done. this has been the most simplest, easiest recipe I've seen. But yet, the dish looks exquisite. I mean, come on, guys. Look at this. I still can't pronounce it. Sorry about that. Peri I still churi. can't pronounce it. Peri churi. <coughs> Peri churi. The chili and we've got the simple sambal salad. But Brett will give it a French name. Or maybe give it a Mozambican name. <laughs> to add your touch to it. And guys, if you plate this and serve this, everyone will be like, wow. Because it is a wow dish. But it's so simple. And All it's right. very fresh. Eh? The one thing about this is... But the easiest thing, I mean, everyone cooking at home will, will, will relate to me when we say that you'd love to plate a beautiful dish, mm. but you think that it's so hard. And if this was plated for you, you'd think, wow, it took so much of effort. You've seen today how easy it is. So thank you, Brett, for showing us how to be master chefs. Cool. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks, thanks. thanks for having me, Imran. So thank guys, you. I'm going to put this out in front. Here's a dish that I prepared. Brett just assisted me. All right, so that's cool. it. We're going to cool. serve it up to our guests that are here uh, in studio and take it cool. from there. Okay, thank you.